Good morning. We look today at chapters 20 through 22 of the book of Isaiah. And, and, and again, there's some strange things that happen as far as I'm concerned. It's chapter 20. Um, it's designated as a time at, by the, in the year that the commander in chief who was sent by King Sargon of Assyria came to Ashdod and fought against it. So, you know, the, but it's, you know, it's a specific time. And this is uh, against Egypt. You know, uh, um, this commander was sent by the king of Assyria to Egypt and, and took it. That means he captured it. And at that time, it says the Lord spoke to Isaiah and told him to take off your sackcloth and your sandals and go about naked. And so we hear about this naked prophet and I don't think it happened only to Elijah. But then it says that he wandered for three years. He was naked as a prophet. And, you know, think about wearing sackcloth and sandals. I mean, sandals wouldn't be so bad, but the sackcloth was made out of, like, coarse goat hair, and it was a, it was an uncomfortable garment to wear. It was something that, you know, sackcloth and ashes would be what you would they would wear when they were mourning, something that would caused discomfort and pain, showing, you know, the discomfort and the, the pain, the, the mourning of, of losing a loved one. But then all of a sudden to, to lose that and to, to be naked. And I mean, what an embarrassment. I mean, how would, you, how would you go about living that way for, for three years? But then in verse three, then the Lord said, just as my servant Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot for three years as a sign and a portent against Egypt and Ethiopia. And it's, God is saying to them that, you know, since Egypt and Ethiopia didn't come to battle against this king of Assyria when he came, you know, they didn't protect this other country. Uh, so then, therefore, you know, Egypt, the people of Egypt would be led away the same way as um, that they would end up, you know, just like, the prophet Isaiah, they would be led away naked and barefoot. They would become slaves. They would be overtaken, and and uh, you know the same thing would be inflicted upon them as they had been uh, with other people that way. He says they will be dismayed and confounded because of Ethiopia, their hope, and Egypt, their boast. You know they were, you know, kind of full of themselves. They were they were powerhouses, but yet. You know, nothing can stand against God. You know, if, if God is displeased, which he was with these, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, and it, it says in that day that they will say, this is what happened to those we had hoped for when we fled and delivered them. How will we escape? You know, they had, they were looking to the wrong leadership. They were forgetting about God and worshiping the, the gods of these other people and, and, and then, you know, the other other people that they were looking to for leadership, for protection, for God, everything, you know, were then again, they were destroyed as well. And um, chapter 21 uh, deals, it talks about against Babylon, you know, the oracle, the word of God concerning the wilderness of the sea. And you know, as the whirlwinds of the Negev sweep from the past, a stern vision, you know, and, and basically, again, it's showing the destruction. You know, the betrayer betrays, the destroyer destroys, you know, everything that's happening, you know, is, is going to come to a, an end. I'm bowed down so I can't hear. I'm dismayed so I can't see. I mean, it's, it, nothing makes sense and of, of all of that. And, but they are, you know, they're preparing Preparing for an attack. There, I mean, every, every, you know, the, you know, they prepare the table. They spread the rug. They eat. They drink. Rise up for thus says old post to look out. And you know, but you know the all the lookout, all of everything going on. You know, they're they're shattered. You know, they're 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 gone. You know, and and Babylon is is overtaken and destroyed as, as well. And you know, there's. I don't know. You know, the, it says, you know, the the prophet uh, is waiting the the news from of of Babylon's fall, and and you know when you're an oppressed people, I mean, 
You know, when the when they were when the Jews were slaves in Egypt, when they were under Assyrian control, under Babylonian control, under Roman control, whatever, you know, they look for the freedom, they look for the release, they they look for the failure of this force that is in oppressing them. And so often when they when they see when it happens, it's just like when Jesus came, you know, they couldn't see in Jesus the Savior and that that Jesus is the you know, he isn't the freedom from the oppression of, of worldly leaders, but he's, the, he's the, the, the freedom that comes from the oppression of Satan and of our sin. But they couldn't see that in Jesus either. And starting in verse 11, it says, you know, the word of God according to Duma, you know, and, you know, and it's kind of, you know, sentinel, what of the night? And then it says morning comes and again also the night. And... According to one of the things that I, I read about this is it says that, you know, morning comes, freedom comes, you know, you are set free, but then night comes. You are again going to be under the oppression, you know, and it, we see that cycle in the, in the life, lifetime of the Israelite nation of the, and, you know, Jerusalem falls and it, so it's what we're going to, you know, find in, in, uh, Verse 22, or chapter 22, they talk about, you know, the upcoming destruction of Jerusalem, how they are, um, well, I'll get into that in a minute, but, but you know, the morning comes, but again, nighttime comes, nighttime follows morning, and, and so, and this is morning as in daybreak, not morning as in weeping and missing, you know, someone that has passed away, but, but it's kind of the story of the cycle of life, and it's, the story of the cycle of the Jewish nation in you know being faithful and God freeing them and and then again they're turning away from God and and becoming oppressed by other other nations and but then so we go into chapter 22 and it's you know it's um, Jerusalem was a fortified city and they thought you know it would you know basically it was uh, secure, no one could overcome it. But yet, it is as you kind of read through here, and it's so hard to understand some of this stuff. I think, but you know, they're they're looking from the wall or looking out, so they're just you know they're they're they they, they destroy some of the houses to refortify the wall, and they take some you know different things that way. But it's it's saying that they're they're putting their faith and their trust in their own resources rather than trusting in God. You know, they looked to the weapons of the house and forest and uh, they forgot. They forgot to be looking at God. And, you know, in verse 12 says, In that day the Lord of hosts called to weeping and mourning to bold his, his sackcloth, but instead there was joy and festivity. You know, they were, it was that let's you know it says let eat, let's let us eat and drink for tomorrow we will die. I mean they were they were rejoicing even though they knew that destruction was coming. And you know it's uh, it's you know kind of the live for today and don't worry about tomorrow attitude. And and you know the end part of verse fourteen. Surely this iniquity, this sin, will not be forgiven. Until you die, says the Lord. But it says, until you shall die. So, I mean, God was looking and he was seeing what was going on. But yet, that until you die, there is that that glimmer of hope, of forgiveness, of grace that would come at, at another time. And it, it, you know, in verse 20 of chapter 22, On that day I will call my servant Eliakim of Hilkanah, and he will come and you will make him your king. And, and, you know, it says that I will fasten him like a peg in a secure place. And, you know, it'll be, you know, it's going to be there and it's going to be strong and everything. But then as you, then it's, you know, the peg that was fastened will give way. So even though God raised this, Eliah come up for the king and he was for a while doing just what he's supposed to, things didn't turn out the way they should have. And the peg was displaced, you know, again. So this, this person that had been raised up to a position of leadership fell away from God. And, you know, and that's, you know, the load that was on it will perish. 
And so everything, all of the hopes and all of the dreams and everything that was placed on, on this new king, uh, due to, you know, um, not trusting and not, not following God, all fell away and was destroyed. And uh, there's so much in, in this that just makes me think, it makes me wonder. And, and there seems to be, there's hope. And then that hope is dashed. It's just, you know, like with this new king coming in, like the, the peg it is fit securely. But then the peg is is uprooted and it fails. And and I just, you know, I think about how often we fail in so much of our lives. And but to just but to know and to trust that God is this God of second and third and fourth and five hundredth chances. May he bless you richly today.